So hey friends, it's a hot day here in Boston, but I wanted to get out in the sun and get a speaker tested that we got in the mail from Musin. This is the Wild Go. It's a variation on the Wild series that I've done a video on before. So if you check that out above, but it's a speaker that I relatively love and it's something that I use to this day. So when I got the more fun looking one, a little bit more cool colors on them, Obviously, I wanted to try it. So once I got in the mail, I needed to take it out in the field, take it around the city, and I even took it back in Seattle when I was doing some hiking. So I'm gonna get into the specs and then get more into my experiences with the speaker. Wild Go comes packed with its classic gift bag and windowed cardboard box. Inside you have the basics of your speaker, manual, and USB charging cable. I will continue to say I miss the times when Musin would add the little quirky things like cases or coasters, but they make you up for it by making this design a lot more striking and better built overall. The exterior is nice painted metal with rubber covers and bumpers. The Wild Go has better covers on the USB-C port, making it better for security and more resistant to water. The move to USB-C is welcome and you can charge this guy with a little under two hours. The bumpers on the back help keep the speaker from rattling on the table when it's placed on its back and the back you'll also notice that they have the specifications with the 500 milliamp battery which gives you around eight hours of playback. In my testing I found that pretty consistent through a few cycles. The top module has all of your controls for power, volume, playback and syncing. Just like the Wild Mini, everything is easy to control with your thumb, allowing for easy one-hand operation. So I know you guys are probably wondering, what's the difference between the OG Wild and the new Go that's been released? And I'm going to say it, they're very similar speakers. There's really not much to hate on either one, but there are some slight differences that I want to identify here for you. So if you guys are trying to choose between the two, maybe this will help a little bit. When you look talk about size, they're basically the same. The Go ends up being a little bit taller because all of the control modules are in a separated bump module on the very top, while the Wild has it a little bit more flush in body. So that's the reason why you kind of have that set up. In terms of its overall controls, it's very similar um, with the uses of switches and, and clicky wheels. I do like that they kept the clicky wheel on the Go because that was my favorite thing to fidget with on the Wild. So. It's cool that it's there. Obviously, this one's a little bit bigger and it has like some little uh, details here that makes it a little bit nicer in the, in the thumb, but this is still just nice and fun as well. In terms of battery, the Go does have a little bit less battery at 500 milliamps while this has 800. But the thing you need to know about the Wild is that it does come with an integrated flashlight. That is why you probably need the extra batteries. So you do have this as extra utilitary function, but you know, maybe you don't need that. If you don't, you'll obviously get a little bit more battery life out of here. Here I've been consistently getting around 7 to 8 hours. Pretty, and then this one, you can get further than that just because of the fact that it has extra battery. From a charging standard perspective, this is a little bit more dated on the Wild as they use micro USB while the Go has USB-C. And obviously, I'm always going to go for USB-C first. So this also makes it better for more efficient charging as well as a, I don't have to carry an extra cable for this one. Um, so I can just have a USB-C cable that charges all my devices rather than having extra stuff to carry around for the wild. So that's something else that's nice about this. In terms of its overall aesthetics, they are kind of different. I will say that this one just appeals to me because I do like utilitarian designs. The Wild is just very nicely sandblasted with the sandblasted metal and it just looks really cool to me. However, a lot of my friends like this speaker but they don't like how it looks and they also don't like how it feels inside the bag or when they hold it. This one for the Go is enough softer tone. So this one is white and blue. They also have a blue and green one which I'll show up here in the screen. But this one's a little bit nicer in terms of like everyday or like more people's aesthetics as well as it's nicer in hand because it's not sandblasted and it has like this nice like seven like eight fifties fifties vintage car feel in terms of how it's built. 
Um, it's just nicer in hand because everything's smoother. It is still made of metal, um, but um, this is just a little bit nicer as an overall aesthetic in terms of most, most people, as well as just in hand. What I will say is I think this one's a little bit more rugged, just in the sense that I've dropped this a few times and it looks like nothing has happened. While with this one, I'd be a little bit more concerned about its scuffing and denting because of the design of it. Um, in terms of their waterproofness, they are both IPX5, so they're both low jet resistant in terms of water splashes. So they're both, they'll both get you across that, but we do some testing as I go into the mountain uh, later. And then finally, the most important thing between these two is which one sounds better. And that's where the differences, a lot more dis differences than I thought there would be. So for the wild, let's start with the OG. This one is very mid and treble focused. As a result, you get a lot better sparkle in voices, especially if you're talking about acapellas or very distinct voices that overpower instruments. However, from a full instrumentation, this works better for me because this gets a lot more bass punch. It does recess the voice slightly, that, but it ends up making it a little bit more neutral. I will say that this is a warmer sounding speaker than the Wild. But um, this one just sounds a little bit more well-rounded. So if I'm listening to rock or hip-hop, R&B, this sounds way better than this one. However, if there is an acapella or there's a very distinctive voice or uh, something that's a little bit more classical, this might sound a little bit better because it makes those higher strings sparkle a little bit better. You can hear the separation a bit better. However, if the, once they start introducing bass, you may feel that the wild is a little bit more emaciated and it just it th it's very, very thin in the bass. While this one is quite nice all around, doesn't matter what you listen to, it will do the job and it will sound pretty, pretty solid. Um, the other thing that I'll notice that here is when you max out the volume on these two, I believe they're around the same decibels, around 70, 80 decibels in terms of loudness is that this one will distort at higher end while this one will maintain its balance or it will maintain its solidarity in terms of sound. So while distortion is not terrible with this one, it's, very no it's more noticeable at the higher end of the volume range while this one maintains more control throughout that. So those are the big differences with the Wild and the Wild Go. Uh, let's talk about how this performs in the field. In the field, the speaker holds up well to provide some gems, even in windier or noisier conditions. I know a lot of you are thinking, why don't you just use headphones? But headphones get annoying when the heat is extra oppressive, like the 97 degree day that we had. It's nice to have your ears free and just leave the speaker on the ground or even hold it in your hand while running. In terms of connectivity distance, it's rated at 10 meters or 30 feet. However, in an open field, I was able to get to the 60 yard hash, which is about 180 feet before the connection completely cut. This gives you a ton of range to run around with the speaker in hand while keeping your phone in your bag. But you don't always have to carry this speaker to hear it. You can also put it down and be hands-free for your workout. From our test, you can still hear it clearly at max volume at the 30-yard hash, which is about 90 feet away. Projection is solid with this little guy, especially on low wind days. All right. Keep it going. So, if you are concerned about the durability of this guy, it is much better than the regular go because I believe it's more waterproof and it looks pretty and less rugged but it should be able to hold up to anything that you throw at it so well, let's check it out whoa it's deeper there than I thought it would be so we're on this snowy pass and this guy is doing fine so pretty still so pretty It'll still work. With a small form factor, it only weighs in around 187 grams, making it easy to tote around in something as small as a fanny pack. This makes it extremely easy to use in your everyday carry loadout and allow you to share your tunes whenever you might need to. So, we have a baby speaker here in Madre, but we're taking a break because we're a little tired from this hike. We're gonna pump some music. I'll show you how loud this mother did get. <laughs> See, I told you it gets loud. It is loud. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing we're the only one hiking right now. I know, right? <laughs> the volume's not bad, and it's so cute. I, know. I like it. 
If you notice from the clip, it was extremely windy on that day, yet the speaker was able to punch through all of that wind and be pleasantly audible. I think the increased 36mm driver size helps with the projection of the sound so it can still be heard at range despite noisier conditions. It was great to listen to the music and motivate us to keep pushing through more mundane parts of the hike, and it was great when we had to take snack breaks when people and wildlife were not around. I know you're supposed to enjoy the silence of nature, but sometimes it's nice to have a soundtrack to your journey, you know? The added benefit that it was rugged enough that we didn't have to worry about tossing around in our bag, and the fact that it didn't weigh us down at all made it a no-brainer to bring on this hike. It was wonderful to have moments of liveliness on occasion to switch up the vibe on our 9-hour trek. This is extremely encouraging for future adventures as I won't have to second guess whether to bring a speaker or not. The Wild Go may have earned a place in my everyday carry. Let's move on to some sound samples so you guys can hear the speaker for yourself. These recordings were at 6 feet away at 70% volume using an H4N microphone array. So I apologize if there's a ton of wind in this. I'll try to speak up so I can get past it. But in terms of recommendations for the Musin Wild Go, I can say that it's it's a go because they've made a lot of improvements over the Wild Mini in terms of charging, in terms of overall design, uh, connectivity. It's just a lot better sounding as well. Um, that bigger 36 millimeter driver definitely is noticeable in terms of volume as well as in terms of projection as well as like distortion control, a lot of stuff that's beneficial here over the OG Wild. So I think that you guys can pick this up without any reservations from my side. There's going to be a link in my description that'll give you 15% off until the end of the month. So definitely check that out if you're interested in this guy, either this colorway or the more Seahawksy blue and green colorway. Both of them are available for 15% off until the end of the month. So check out that link at your leisure. Anyway guys, I appreciate you guys sticking with me with these more vloggy style reviews. It's just a little bit easier sometimes to whip out the action camera and some of these other microphones to get more dynamic shots. So I'm glad that you guys are liking some of that content. But anyway, if you guys could, please like, comment, subscribe, do all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. And I'll see you very shortly. We'll have to do a live stream because it hasn't been a couple weeks since we've done one. But uh, thank you guys so much as always. I appreciate you. Peace.